So welcome to virtual field trips through our national parks. We're starting off with Ranger Bryson. He's from Waco Mammoth National Park in Texas. And if you have a screen share, it, that's available for you. So take it away, Ranger Bryson. All right, good morning, everyone. Hopefully everybody can see me here. Uh, there we go, let's get you a good view of where we are. And you can see all of those awesome in situ fossils that we have here. Uh, so my name is Bryson Turnbull. I am the lead park ranger for the National Park Service here at Waco Mammoth National Monument. And we have a distance learning program called the Great Mammoth Mystery. And we tailor that program, it is curriculum based of course, and we tailor that program based on the grade level that we're working with. So if you are elementary or middle school or high school, we kind of tailor it based on those needs. And then as we book the program with you, the teacher, we also talk with you personally to see if there's any particular items that fit right into your lesson plan or things that you need us to go over. We talk about fossils, how they become fossils, why this site is important, as it's the only known Colombian mammoth nursery herd. We also work with you in the regards to we have lesson plans and we have other uh, materials that you can use to create an entire lesson plan at the beginning of the year or to supplement what you've already got going on. Our programs typically last between um, 30 minutes to an hour. It depends on your time, how much time you have, how many questions the students ask and things like that. We also have a wonderful virtual tour, and that is something that you can use. Let's say you can't schedule us. We're not available on a day that you have class, or maybe we're already all booked up. Our program is pretty popular. Um, you can still use our lesson plans and our worksheets and things like that um, in conjunction with the virtual tour. And the virtual tour will get you, and let me figure out how to swap my screen here. Maybe I can't, but the virtual tour will get you right up next to the bones with the students. And so we look at them and we talk about pathologies in the bones. We do all of this really cool stuff. And it allows for us to tailor the program based on your class, what you're teaching in your student. Uh, there are different ways that you can book with us. You can do it through our website. You can call the uh, site directly. And we do our best to work with you all in your timeframes. Right now, I am in Central Time working for an East Coast meeting. So I get here a little early, that's no problem at all. We don't mind doing that at all. And um, again, if your classroom doesn't fit into our normal scheduled times, uh, we can usually show some flexibility with that. And so we take about 30 minutes to an hour for that specific program. If you are doing a national parks in general, we have um, behind the flathead is what we call that. Most uh, parks will have a program like that. And that's where your class gets to send, uh, send a park ranger questions ahead of time. And then we sit down with the class and we answer those questions and we talk about national parks and we talk about what we do and all of that cool stuff. And so there's lots of opportunity and we try to tailor as close as we can and to what you've got going on or what in particular that you're studying. So it's not just um, a canned program. We want it to be a little bit more personal. We want it to fit in better so that it is more of a help to you all. And one thing that I think, because we've got more parks coming here advertising their uh, distance learning, almost every single park has at least one distance learning program, if not more, and, and it's worth it. So if you're a history teacher, they can fit in. If you're a biology teacher, we can fit in. Uh, whatever you've got going on, whatever you're teaching, odds are there is a national park that fits right into that, and they will have a distance learning program that you can take part in. And to crank it up even another level, it's free. And that's one of the best things about it. So you can take an amazing virtual field trip to a park that your students may never actually be able to go to and have a personalized, detailed experience that's almost better than being there. Our visitors are up here on this catwalk and they look down into the bone bed. But when you're with me, you're down here in it and we get real close to all of it. And it's a really cool experience and um, and all the distance learning that I've done, I don't think I've had any students that were ever disappointed with that really neat and unique view. I also think that 
um, one thing I want to mention that isn't necessarily in particular to our distance learning program, but is more about another program the National Park Service offers, which is the Teacher Ranger Teacher Program. Now, they are going to take next summer off in order to um, evaluate, revamp, and things like that. But what it is, is a program that allows for teachers to get master's level um, continuing education credits through a partner uh, up to most recently, it was the University of Colorado. And then they go to the national park that they're partnered with and they help a ranger there and they create programming. So for instance, I have a teacher from Goldthwaite, Texas, about an hour away, who's been my teacher ranger teacher this year, Mrs. Oaf. And she's a high school teacher. And she says, there's always material everywhere for middle school. She's like, there's never anything for high school. And so she wanted to create some stuff for high school. So I've got lesson plans and worksheets and things that fit right into um, the high school level, which is really wonderful. I'm excited to get those all shored up and get those on our website. But for all of you teachers out there, it's a wonderful opportunity. It's super exciting. You get some teacher ranger teacher swag and you get to participate with your local national park. So that's always something to keep out for. They usually start looking to fill those positions um, in mid spring or so. And it's over the summer. Uh, this year they did two cohorts. So early summer, late summer, depending when your school ends or starts. And it's a really cool opportunity. And it really is a wonderful way for you as teachers to see just exactly what parks do and have to offer. And uh, one other plug that I always ask is that my teachers share with all of your network of what national parks have to offer and what we can do for you as teachers. Uh, education is part of our primary mission and we wanna share that with you and we wanna be successful and you help us do that. Um, and that's mainly what I have to say. Does anybody have any questions about Waco Mammoth, our program, what I do, anything like that? I know one thing, Ranger Bryson, that the Waco National Park also offers, uh, that your park has a virtual tour as well. Would you yeah. ever suggest a teacher to look at that before a connection to help familiarize the kids, or is that not necessary? It certainly won't hurt. Uh, I think it depends on the lesson plan that the teacher is doing. If there are certain components that they want to stress um, about evolution. Uh, one of the things that we use uh, are the teeth of mammoths. They're wonderful examples of form following function and the evolution of proboscideans, which are our trunked friends. And uh, it's a wonderful thing to know and that you can possibly use ahead of time. It also allows you as the teacher to familiarize yourself with what the students will see. Um, so that can maybe help you as the teacher have a couple questions where perhaps the students aren't necessarily asking things or perhaps the ranger that gave the program maybe didn't mention one thing that's important to you in your lesson plan. They will then be able to or you will then be able to say hey what's going on over there or hey could you tell us about blank and the ranger will respond to that right away and be able to uh, make sure that the program is, is checking off all the boxes that you have. The virtual program um, a lot of parks have them. My previous park, the Lincoln Home National Historic Site, um, has one and they bring the, those really cool, I call them Google cameras, and they just take everything all at once and they bring them in and you can zoom in so close. So for example, maybe you wanna go to that after you've done your virtual tour and the students are asking questions about something in particular and you're, you're like, oh, uh, I, you know, I wanna see it again. So for instance, Right here, when we're looking at Mammoth Q, Mammoth Q is our big bull mammoth. And right here is a break in his rib and it was infected, but it was healing. And that's what we call a pathology. Um, and so pathologies are part of how paleontologists determine what happened to that animal um, before it died or why it died. And so maybe you're working on one of our worksheets and it's asking about a pathology and the student's like, what was it one thing you showed us? And they couldn't remember. You can go hop right into the virtual tour. It's on the front page of our website and you can click your way right over to that and zoom in just like I showed you all. Um, and it allows for a close-up view that doesn't move. It's right there until you're done looking at it. And you can look over the entirety of the bone bed. Um, and all the different fossils that we have super close up and um, without moving around or um, experiencing the time crunch that you might have when you're in an actual program with the ranger. And uh, it's crystal clear. It's really cool. It's well labeled. It's fully accessible. Uh, it's a wonderful thing that we have. And 
we actually did that in back in 2020 because, well, nobody could come and visit and we wanted folks to still be able to experience our site. And so we paid to have that done. And it's proven to be a wonderful tool uh, for both regular visitors and for teachers alike. Excellent. Thank you, Ranger Bryson. And I highly encourage you to check out their virtual tour as well. Um, I did myself. I'm not going to bring it up now. I know that would take a lot of effort for my computer in addition to having the Zoom call. So, um, but they do have a time range and I want to do a quick screen share and then we're moving on to our next park. Does that look right? Whoops, you know what? Stop that because I bet I didn't pick the right screen. Let me double check. All right, yeah. Oops, so, that's right. Okay, distance learning, this is your availability. Does that seem right August through November and then again, February through May? That is correct. Now we are actually, um, we're technically a young park and we actually have some staff, permanent staff coming on board at the end of this month. Uh, and what's exciting about that is that's going to allow us to expand our offerings um, as far as times go for um, the distance learning program, because we also operate our on-site education program as well. Uh, so once we get that new staff on board and trained, um, you will see that uh, opening up to a second day. Um, and it will be just those two time frames in one day. Uh, but I think the important thing is to remember is that if we are not if your class falls out of that time frame, that's okay. Shoot us an email at Waco underscore education at mps.gov and that, uh, or in, uh, Waco underscore distance learning, either one's fine. And those website or emails are on our website. Um, let us know and say, hey, I have a class, but it falls out of those time frames. If we can, we'll work with you for sure. Um, those are just the common time frames that we like to use. They fall in good time frames with uh, the tour schedule for public tours, so it's not too loud and crazy around you, around whoever the ranger is. Um, and we like to work with you. We want um, our teachers to be able to use the program. And so uh, just because the time frame or the day that you're looking for isn't listed there, go ahead and shoot us an email. If we're available, we're going to work with you. Um, we like to try to be as flexible as we can. And we understand that not every single teacher has a class time that falls right on that day, right in those time periods. And so we want to make sure that everyone is able to experience um, this really cool program that we have. And you'll find that a lot of parks are that way. Now, once you get into the really kind of super busy parks, you're talking Yosemite, Yellowstone, things like that, they have to stick to their timeframes a little more stringently than we do. Um, we can offer that flexibility. Uh, but I always say, my mom says, you never know, run into the flagpole and see who salutes it. Okay, thank you. That was Ranger Bryson from Waco Mammoth National Park in Texas. We are going to jet off in our virtual bus, I guess, bad analogy. Um, it's a fast bus, I guess. I'm thinking of uh, <laughs> uh, Miss Frizzle, I suppose. Well, we also have the Midwest Archaeological Center and the Rebecca I see in my participants panel is the one that's going to speak to us from the Midwest Archaeological Center and Rebecca is calling us from Pennsylvania. Is that correct? No. <laughs> oh, shoot. Nebraska, oh, Lincoln, ne Nebraska. <laughs> Nebraska, I looked down one line on my spreadsheet. Thank you for correcting me. Do you have a screen share or anything you'd like to show us? Uh, I don't have anything in the background, no. I am okay. going to share a link in the chat, hopefully. Oh, good. Got um, it. So that everyone can see the program offerings that are currently provided. Um, as the other Rebecca mentioned, I am... Um, I'm not a ranger, I'm an archaeologist at the Midwest Archaeological Center, um, which is part of the National Park Service, and we are a program office, which is based out of Lincoln, Nebraska, so that's our kind of headquarters, but we serve the whole Midwest region of the Park Service, so it's a 13-state region. There are over 60 national park sites within the region. Um, most of them don't have professional archaeologists on their staff, and so um, people from my office, myself and my colleagues, we provide support to them. So we provide advice on the archaeological research uh, resources that are in their parks, and we actually do archaeology in those locations. So right now we are in currently in our kind of busy field season, 
And we have a lot of teams out at various national parks. I just got back from uh, Herbert Hoover National Park or National Historic Site in Iowa. Um, so we provide archaeological services. And then the other thing that we provide is a curation facility. So we have museum professionals on staff as well, um, whose job is to take care of the artifacts that we find, um, make sure that they are in a good state so that people can do research on them and so that they are available for um, museum exhibits as needed. So um, sort of my job is as education and out, uh, outreach coordinator as well. And probably the biggest part of that um, kind of branch of our um, offerings is distance learning. We do in-person things when we can. We do in-person things when we're out on sites in parks so that people can um, see us in action. But distance learning is the best way to reach people and we'll do it. Um, you know, we've done programs through every state in the United States plus um, some other countries as well. So in terms of the programs that we have, most of our offerings are kind of geared toward um, a K through five audience. Although we do have a few programs that are um, very suitable for middle school, high school students as well. The Ask an Archaeologist that you see advertised second, that's a good um, kind of career day option for middle and high school students um, where it's designed to kind of introduce you to what it's like to actually have archaeology as your career, um, what kinds of education you need and that sort of thing. Um, the other programs that are, I said, are geared toward K through five, we can adapt for uh, a more mature audience. If you give us enough lead time, we'll, we'll make those corrections and adjustments. Um, if you notice on the very far left, there's a series that's called Archaeology Excavation to Curation. And that consists of a five part series where it begins with an introduction to archaeology. And then you see um, there's a program called Archaeological Sites, uh, Excavation and Tools, Mapping, and then finally analysis and curation. So there, it kind of takes you through the entire process of archeology. span So what archeology span is, the kinds of places that we work, the tools that we use, how we document things, and then how we care for things. We occasionally have people book that entire series and it works pretty well if you do one module per day, if you have like a week that you're focusing on archeology. span um, or we've done it also um, one module per week for, for various groups. However, I should mention that all of those modules that I mentioned that are part of excavation to curation, you can also book separately. So um, the most common one that is booked is introduction to archaeology, where it's just an overview of what we do as archaeologists, and we give you examples from the sites that we work in in um, the national parks. The other really popular one in that series happens to be mapping because I know that meets a lot of um, educational standards, but we use archaeology as kind of a case study for, you know, how to take, how to scientifically map things, the of mapping um, pictures that are available on a map, so, and why archaeologists need that information. So that's also something that's often booked as a standalone um, module but any of them can be. So I wanted to mention that as well. The other biggest program that we offer is called Tour Through Time. And that's a big one because it is easily adjustable for um, any audience. So we do that for uh, K through 12, all the way up through adult learning groups. Um, that one is basically a tour through our museum collections that we care for at the Midwest Archaeological Center. So we actually provide examples of artifacts that archaeologists have found and what those can tell us about the human past. Um, it's also very adaptable for whatever kind of topic that you're interested in. So I've done tour through times that were focused on the development of agriculture. So you can see how artifacts change over time as we see that shift from um, people who are hunting and gathering in a region to shifting towards gardening and then agriculture. Um, I've also done it focused on a specific region. As I said, we work, um, we work in the Midwest. Um, there's 13 states that we serve regularly. We've worked in some other places as well. 
But if you're from one of those Midwestern states, there's a high likelihood that we have a lot of um, artifacts in our collection from your state. And if you give us enough lead time, you know, if you ask us a couple weeks in advance, we can actually um, have artifacts that are geared toward your particular state for use in that program. So those are kind of the main programs that we do. Um, the one thing that I wanted to kind of impress with people is that we are pretty flexible, but if you give us enough lead time, we can tailor these programs to your specific needs, um, to the things that you are focusing on in your classroom at that time. Um, the other thing that I wanted to mention is that we are um, sort of able to work through different um, timeframes as well. So we have a few, uh, me and myself and a few of my colleagues frequently do these distance learning programs and their availability is based on our availability. So generally during the school year, some, somebody will be available between about 9 a.m. and 4 p.m. Central, um, Central Time. And if you want, want to book a program during that time frame, um, there's a good chance that you'll be able to do it, that we'll have some availability and one of us will be able to provide that program. Um, so we don't have like a set schedule for distance learning um, as long as you request a time within that sort of time frame. So I think my time is almost up, but if anyone has questions, um, I'm happy to answer those. In Nebraska, you're central time. So you're typically one hour behind us, correct? Correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's the other important thing um, that that's the, you know, I do have a lot of um, people from Eastern time and Pacific time trying to book programs. And so you just have to watch that time window to make sure that we're available. Midday is usually good though. Yeah. <laughs> so as uh, you're a classroom teacher thinking of when you would fit this into your schedule, some of that is going to play into where are you connecting? And what I have is a list of the national parks. I did not make this. This was actually given to me. And uh, the gentleman who deserves the credit is Paul Hieronymus. He is uh, from North Ridgeville Schools. And what I did this summer is added a little bit. Now, it's not on the document, but I'm going to send out a follow-up and <clears throat> link it to this recording as well. I have taken and gone through this list and figured out what states. I mean, it didn't, it, did, it wasn't a big mystery. It's just you have to look up each park and find out what state they're from because certainly um, connecting to the Rocky Mountain National Park in Pacific time, or sorry, mountain time is going to limit when you can connect. It means you're going to have to have an afternoon class instead of your morning students. So I know sometimes schools have been flexible to allow the students come, even if they were a morning class, maybe come back to your class later um, for a special event like this. So this is the link I'm placing into the chat and that will take you to a full listing of national parks. And I'll do a quick screen share. Um, and pause there too, if in case anyone has a question for Rebecca. I also put in the chat our uh, distance learning email address um, so you can reach any of us there if you have a question about booking or um, tailoring a program to your needs. Wonderful. Thank you for your time, Rebecca. It's really interesting to hear how many areas you work with for archaeology. So that brings us to our next park. And I'm going to put myself on mute after a quick introduction. We have with us Barbara Sanders, and she's coming from the Gettysburg National Military Park. And she is in Pennsylvania. So. Um, Take it away, Barbara. Okay, thank you. Good morning, everyone. Um, just um, full disclosure, I'm sort of off today, so um, but I'm happy to to be coming on to you. But I'm I'm letting you know I'm at my house, 
and my dog is to my left and there are bunnies in the yard. So if you hear uh, all of a sudden a loud uh, bark, that's what you're hearing, but we're hoping she's gonna be uh, be calm this morning. So it, um, Gettysburg National Military Park, I know many of you are science teachers, but I just wanna reiterate a couple of things that right, Ranger Bryson had said, and that is while we do have a formalized program, uh, distance learning program, which I'm going to put up on the screen here in a moment. Um, we can personalize. We do have science connections. We do a lot with language arts and, of course, history, geography, things like that. And we're happy to tailor um, programs to fit your uh, needs. And the other thing I wanted to reiterate that he said is that these are all free of charge and that we love um, to do them. In addition, let me just share my screen here. There she goes. She's about to bark everybody. Okay, there we go. Okay, in addition, um, we have all kinds of things for teachers in addition to distance learning. And um, we have um, traveling trunks and traveling maps that we ship out to schools across the country and across the world. Hold on one second. Okay, thank you so much. These are kits of materials that you have for two weeks in your classroom um, to set up that hit all kinds of um, elements and, and things. And the full, I can, I can tell you more about that if you're interested, but I just wanted to let you know that those are available. We also have teacher workshops in the summer. We just concluded those recently. Um, and a leadership, a youth leadership program called the Great Task Youth Leadership Program. If you have subsets of your student population, like a student council, or um, if there's a um, Big Brothers, Big Sisters, or something like that organization, we these all these things are um, funded through our partner, the Gettysburg Foundation, another partner, the American Battlefield Trust. And so they're all committed to teachers and making these um, really no cost options for your classroom. So let's get down to um, our virtual offerings. There we go. So Gettysburg is a 7,000 acre park that commemorates um, two big events, the three day Battle of Gettysburg, July 1st, 2nd and 3rd, 1863 as well as President Abraham Lincoln's Gettysburg Address in November of that year, probably the most famous speech in, in American history. And so um, what our distance learning programs do is they focus on um, different um, themes that we can hit in three ways. And the ranger session is the third part of the process. So for each of these programs, we have a short video that we've created that you show to your, it's about a 10 minute video that you show to your students. And it's all centered around a focus question. I'm sorry, this is the wrong screen. This is the screen I wanted. It, they all center around a focus question. And you can see some of our focus questions uh, in the right-hand column there. And um, the first part of that program is watching this video that it shows a ranger on the battlefield um, investigating various sites that have to do with that focus question. The second part of our distance learning, our virtual field trips, are primary source documents that you, are emailed to you that you then use um, and have your students investigate. And both that film and the primary source documents are to help your students um, answer, create their own answer to um, that question. The third part of the program is then a ranger session where we do provide a few minutes of uh, presentation around the theme and the focus question, but really that session is for the students to ask us the questions, whatever questions they need to be able to create their answer 
and uh, to that focus question with evidence. So kind of a common core um, based programs. For elementary students, that might be a sentence and a photo and a, a drawing. For middle school students, it might be a paragraph that they create to answer. And for high school students, uh, that can be a full page um, essay. We do have graphic organizers that I will show you in a minute um, that can help uh, facilitate that process. So as you can see from the list here, we have um, <clears throat> a time traveling program um, based in uh, Flat Stanley or Flat Ranger for younger students. Um, another very popular program is our re-enlist program, which asks students, would you re-enlist in the Civil War Army for three years after serving for just three months? And we run them through uh, the medical exam, some uh, training, the equipment and all of that before that pro in that program. Tide of Battle program looks at uh, July 2nd, 1863 and, and focuses on turning points um, or most or decisive points. Decision Points is a civilian uh, based program, specifically the African American residents of Gettysburg and their de unique decision points that they had to make uh, before, during, and after the Battle of Gettysburg, which is located just above. Uh, the Mason-Dixon line that separated Pennsylvania and Maryland and also free states from slave states. Path of Lincoln, again, looks at that um, Gettysburg address and Lincoln's visit to Gettysburg and, and whether his trip here made a difference in, in the war. But our most popular program is our cost of war program, which asks were the consequences of war necessary to resolve the country's issues? And kids have really good questions and really good responses to that program. Um, and it again, that's our most popular program. This is just uh, a couple of photos to give you a little bit more. We do have a distance learning studio. I'm not there currently, but that's in the bottom right. Um, we do also try to get out on the battlefield to do those Q&A sessions whenever we can. Um, on the left there is Ranger John uh, up on Little Round Top. And then we also have um, lots of videos and materials and curriculum materials and lesson plans on the education pages on our website. So um, you can feel free to check that out and I'll give you um, <clears throat> my email address as well in a moment. Um, the other thing that I just wanted to share with you, um, if I could, I go back up to this. This document that you see here is our education handbook. Um, we are currently creating the one for this school year that will start next month in September and go through August. And you can see my email address there, GETT underscore education at nps.gov, also my direct line. And we have a specific Facebook page um, for teachers, students, and families in addition to the parks um, general Facebook page. If you'd like to be on the mailing list to receive that handbook next month, feel free uh, to shoot me an email and uh, let me know and we'll get you there. Otherwise, everything will be um, on our website. And the last thing I wanted to say before I open up to any questions is um, <clears throat> we also have a virtual tour. If that's something you want to do, there, is, there are 13 to 16, depending on which, stops on our, uh, on our park, on our auto tour. And in the virtual tour, it's our chief historian um, with a two to three minute video at each of those sites, standing on the ground where these events happened and, um, and, and providing insight into that. So that's another option as well. So I'll stop my share now. If anybody has any questions, I'm happy to answer them and we'd, uh, we'd love to be part of your school year. And would they find your programs directly from your website or would they go to CILC, the Center for Interactive Learning and Collaboration? Oh, you're muted. You definitely go to our website or give me give me a ring and um, Someone also has a question on the chat. Uh, the process to get the trunks, um, it's the same. You go to our website or ask to get the, um, 
the education handbook and really we do everything over email you send us your school information and then we have a listing of dates that we send them out that they're available we have six different trunks they're the same trunk but same curriculum but we're sending them out all school year and so um, just let us know and we'll get those to you yeah i can put uh sure let me see www with a link to our website. You just go to the education pages there. Thank you for that additional resource. Thank you all. All right. Oh, and Elise is asking what kind of topics do the trunks encompass? Oh, okay, thank you. Yes, the trunks um, encompass um, um, different perspectives of the war it used to be the life of a civil war soldier but now we include perspectives of uh the soldiers the commanders president lincoln himself um the civilians uh, and so there's a, a music station of the civil war there is um i can get you a whole list of all the contents it's a big truck trunk that's fedexed and it's designed to be set up into independent learning stations that you have the students rotate uh, through. And the only complaint we ever get about those is that the teachers want them longer than the two to three weeks uh, that they have them because other grades uh, want to get in on that very active hands-on learning. And I will say that a lot of national parks have traveling trunks. Um, I don't know how many ship them as extensively as we do, but there are a lot of traveling trunk programs out there. Well, that's a bonus. Something I learned new today. Thank you. You're welcome. And we have another park here ready to work with us and tell us about them. As soon as I find my spreadsheet, I can tell you more too. Our last park, as long as they're with us, Jacob Bowling, and he is here, he's muted, and he is coming from the Great Smoky Mountains National Park, which spans North Carolina and Tennessee. I don't know if any of you have been down there. Um, I know I have and enjoy my Smoky Mountain visits. So Jake, take it away. Hey guys, how are y'all? Um, can everybody see me okay? My my uh my little screen is is black, and I'm not sure how I turn my camera on. Yeah, it's not saying that your camera is muted or anything. I wonder if there's a different camera to select, and you're not on the. Hmm. If it's just black, and. Well, um, I'm not sure. I apologize. I thought that maybe that was a, well, I'll tell you what, um, I'm hoping that I can share my screen. So let me do that so that we at least have something to look at. Wow. Can everyone thumbs up? Can you see my screen? Okay, perfect. So uh, folks, you can't see me, but I am uh, standing in my office. My name is Jake Bowling. I am the supervisor of resource education uh, and just like Rebecca said, uh, Great Smokies does span two states and we're split up into several districts. So I'm the supervisor for resource education for North District or for the Tennessee side. Um, and we have a, a very a very robust uh, parks as classrooms program. Uh, and we have quite a bit of distance learning opportunities. So before I get into those, I just want to um, uh, break down kind of some of the subjects. As you can imagine, the Great Smoky Mountains, we have uh, extremely incredible, uh, especially in this populated of an area, extremely incredible natural resources that the park preserves and that people can learn about. And so a lot of our uh, programs do go into the exploration, the study, uh, the viewing and, and and investigating of these natural resources. And we also have a lot of cultural resources that we uh, can talk about and discuss. Of course, the Appalachian people that were here, uh, some of the folks that uh, are still surviving in, in this general area and their way of life, we, we, we talk and go through some of that. And of course, some of the Cherokee culture, the Eastern band of the Cherokees. We're so close to, um, to them and that their story is so interwoven to our park story. Now to what our specific offerings are. 
So you could kind of break our, our distance learning uh, opportunities into three major categories. Um, the first one is very similar to what a lot of my other Ranger friends were mentioning, and that is live interactive Ranger programming. And if you see my screen here, this is our website. You can see the URL up here. It's from our park website, and this shows you some of our distance learning opportunities. We offer, because we do have such a robust program, we only offer our distance learning, our live interactive programs from uh, December to February. And I will drop a link on how to uh, schedule those. They are free, just like my other Ranger friends, they're free. And I'll drop a link to our sign up sheet in the chat so you can see that. And for the live interactive programs that we have, here is a list of what we have to offer. And as you can see, and I won't go through every single one of them, but you can see that we cover grades pre-K all the way up to 12th grade. Um, a lot of these are natural resource themed. Uh, in the beginning, in the earlier grades, it's more about exploration, senses, sounds, uh, getting the basic concepts down. And you can see that it kind of ramps up. We get into trivia as it gets a little bit older. And of course, each grade is tailored depending on what we do. And for the older grades going into high school, we actually start uh, doing data monitoring and citizen science programs and trying to really pick out the inner scientist of some of these students. And of course, we have our very general, uh, I know Ranger Bryson mentioned that we have a general uh, Ask a Ranger program, which is a really good, just what does a park ranger do? What do you do as a park ranger kind of thing? Just side note, one of my favorite programs that we offer is Horton Hears a Water Bear. If you could see down here, uh, we'll get into all the cool things that water bears do, but it's interesting uh, conversations on water quality and it does span, as you can see, grades five through 12. Another, uh, another distance learning opportunities that we have that are available year round is our asynchronous programming. Our asynchronous videos and resources are available let me go to, I wonder if I can change. Oh, okay. So you can see this screen. This is our third, this is a third party website. So it's not our national park website, but you can see it's smokies.org. Oh, okay. I just switched to this screen, smokies.org. And this is where a lot of our asynchronous videos live. And this is a really cool user-friendly website. And one of the things I love about this website is how uh, you can search and how it's really kind of personalized. So you can see my search tabs here. And for example, I need a, let's see, a science program focused on, we want to do outdoor activity about insects let's do bugs and i am a eighth grade teacher so i go here and it does the best of course we don't have an infinite uh, library but it does the best of pulling out what we do have on these topics and giving something that may work for you so this is a really fun site to explore and again something that you can use to check out the smokies from anywhere in the country anytime during the year we might now, not have seen your search. We are still looking at the Smokies, Explore, Entertain, and Escape. Did a different window pop up when you did your search? I am so sorry. Yes, it did. OK, thanks. So thank you for, thank you for uh, mentioning that. So I am still getting used to this. We, we rangers and technology don't always jump, jump well, done, well together. But uh, so our search, as I was mentioning, we can see our search bars here. So I said science teacher, outdoor activities, and insects for, let's say, eighth grade. And we go to go, and it populates a video that may meet those criteria. So um, this is a really cool, again, a really cool resource uh, that, that you can check out. And it's fairly user friendly. I'm going to switch to the next tab, back to the home page. And uh, just kind of wrap up on the asynchronous programming. So that's something really fun to explore. Now, last but not least, and this is a this is a new thing. I'm going to switch tabs again. Is we are starting. We're going to start registration in December, on December fourth, twenty twenty three, 
and we are going to start seminar style programs. So our seminar style programs are going to run from January to February. And this is going to be kind of uh, not boilerplate. We're still developing some of the content. But the idea is, is that we are going to develop several programs, several kind of uh, live programs that anybody can log into and get access to and interact with a ranger on. And it'll be, you know, a set time, a set date. And again, registration will begin December 4th, 2023. Now to sign up for these programs, I am going to so just so you could see what that looks like, we have uh, this program sheet. And this is if you've ever used Google Forms or Outlook Forms, this is very similar and it's, it's very user friendly. This, this one specifically is for the Tennessee side of things, but we work very closely with our North Carolina friends and our Cades Cove friends. And we, uh, you can go through here and see the different options. So I'm gonna share this link in our chat here. for anyone who would like to sign up for any of our programs. And I think that about wraps everything up. Does anyone have any questions about the Smokies and the Great Smoky Mountains distance learning options or opportunities or anything about the park that I can help with? We have a quiet bunch with us today. <laughs> that's okay. That's okay. Yeah. And um, it's so fun to be visiting virtually these different places. And um, so many have uh, virtual options. I like that you pointed out the asynchronous options to offer when sometimes the distance learning might not sync up with somebody's calendar so that or schedule. So thank you for that. Very welcome. Thank you for having us today, Rebecca. Yes, my pleasure. So our classroom teachers joining us, um, I want to thank all of our rangers and Rebecca, who is not a ranger, but are part of our, the archaeology group. Um, everybody, uh, thank you for joining us. And I also want to share out um, the additional resources, I'll put that in an email or in this video recording. I'll put that in the video description so everybody has it. And our first park, which was the Cuyahoga Valley National Park, they had internet connection issues <laughs> earlier and they did send me a, a PowerPoint to include. So I will add that to our video recording description and email that to our participants later on. So thank you so much, all of our parks for joining today. And I'm going to end our recording now. <laughs>